appearance. And I learned that Snooky was a tall and handsome man. I learned that there was a time in which Snooky was a pretty impressive dancer. And that it wasn't uncommon uh, to catch Snooky donning his cowboy boots and his cowboy hat. Others spoke of uh, Snooky's resourcefulness, of his ingenuity, of his creativity, uh, of his ability to rise above the challenges that are part of being confined to a wheelchair. Snooky had a successful construction business, and in that business he had to devise ways and use his God-given creativity to, to, to make up ways to do things that others would have uh, most likely deemed impossible. Others spoke of his leadership abilities and his ability to kind of lead in no matter what crowd he was in. And still others spoke of his uh, uncanny, I think was the word they used, ability to communicate. To communicate truths and concepts just using uh, his verbal ability. But you know, the thing that stood out to me the most, the characteristic that stood out to me the most, as I asked you, what, tell me about Snooky. The thing that stood out to me the most was his care for people. His genuine concern for others. In fact, everybody who spoke of him attested to the fact that Snooky had a genuine love for people. He, loved, he was well loved. And he loved everybody that he knew and came in contact with. So he was relational, I learned. And he desired relationship, not just uh, the surfacey stuff that I think, if we were honest, tends to characterize much of our relationships, but uh, he desired the stuff that mattered, the stuff of relationship that really mattered, the stuff that makes relationships worth being part of. Well, of all of the Characteristics that I heard of, of Snooky. Whether it was his creativity, his drive, his ambition, his will, his ingenuity, or his relational characteristic, the one that stood out to me the most was his desire for being in a relationship with people. And I'm reminded as I think about that characteristic of the truth that we learn from the very first book of the Bible, from Genesis, the Bible tells us that when God formed man and woman and placed them in the Garden of Eden, the Bible tells us that God made them in His own image. In fact, Genesis 1.27 says it this way, God created man in His own image, and then the writer repeats it because it's important. He says, in the image of God, He created them man and female. God created them. And what that points out to us, or the truth that that reminds us of, is that as God fashioned men and women, that He made them with His own hands, and He made them much like Himself, with characteristics that He Himself has. And so, so we are relational, we desire intimacy, and we all do. It was very evident with Snooky, but in reality, all of us desire that. And sometimes we, we pursue that in unhealthy ways, but we are a people who desire to connect with other people. And the reason why that is, is because God himself is relational. It is because God desires relationship. In fact, the Bible tells us that when God made man and woman, he made them for his own good pleasure. Because he wanted to. Because he wanted relationship with you and with me. In fact, the Bible tells us that before sin ever entered into the world, uh, Adam and Eve used to just walk around the garden talking with God in the cool of the day. I think it would have been pretty incredible, quite a blessing, to be a fly on the wall to hear one of those conversations. But sadly, the Bible tells us that there came a day... <clears throat> When Adam and Eve decided that they were going to remove themselves from the boundaries that God had placed. In fact, He gave them one rule. And they decided one day, a very willful decision, we're going to break that rule. And it was less about the fact that they broke the rule and more about the fact that they decided on that day that you will not be the God of my life, but I will be the God of my life. The Bible teaches us that at that moment, that Adam and Eve made that decision and, and, and committed that act that they introduced sin to the world. And not only did they bring in 
in sin, but with that act of sin, the Bible says that they brought in this thing that we have today, physical death. In fact, it's in Genesis 3 where we read those very familiar words in an occasion like this, from dust you have come, and to dust you will return. But the Bible says that not only did Adam and Eve bring in sin and bring in death, a physical death, but at that moment, something else occurred, and it was something that we call the spiritual death. A separation from God. A separation that Adam and Eve had never experienced before. And it was a separation that existed because they were now sinners, and, and God, of course, was not. And sin had put up that wall. And I want you to know this afternoon that that could very well have been the end of the story for humanity. God could have been very just and said, you know what? Uh, that's it. I gave them their opportunity. I gave them their choice. They made it. And man and God will forever be separated. But the rest of the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, if you were to sum it up in one phrase, would be this. God making a way for humanity to be restored to himself. I've heard it said, and I believe this is true, that more than anything else, the one thing that humanity is searching for and looking for is this thing called hope. And we might disguise that in a hundred different ways. It sometimes might appear that this person's looking for wealth, or this person's looking for popularity, or this person's just looking to fill their lives up with the stuff of this world. But the more that I talk and interact with people and listen to people, the more I come to the realization that what we are looking for, more than anything else, is hope. It is an anchor. It is something that is firm, something that is solid, something that will not be moved, something worth living for, something worth dying for, something not just for this temporal existence, but something for eternity. I often find that it is at times like these, after having suffered the loss of someone that we love, that we are most in tune with the reality of that need and that desire. And I want you to know this afternoon that the greatest hope that you and I could ever have is not something that money can buy. It's not something that this temporal world can give us. The greatest hope that you and I can have is the reality, the recognition of the reality, the acceptance of the reality reality, that God loves people, that God loves us, and that God desires relationship with us. In fact, he desired it so much that the Bible says God made a way for you and I to be restored to him. Next month, we're going to celebrate Christmas. And I know that Christmas has become about lights and presents and trees, but Christmas is that occasion when we celebrate the day that God sent his son, Jesus, to live a perfect life on this earth. To live for 33 years and then to give up his life. To die on a cross and to be buried and to raise from the dead, conquering death for one reason. So that God could offer to you and to me forgiveness of sin. Restoration with him. Because there's one thing that walks in. And it is the fact that you're a sinner. And God, in that one act of giving Jesus, said, listen, I'm offering you a gift. It is forgiveness of sin. It's restoration. It is reconciliation with the God that we are separated from. John 1.12 says that as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God. Ecclesiastes Chapter 3 <clears throat> says these words. For everything there is a season. A time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. My prayer for you this afternoon, friends and family, Norman, Snooky, Mary, would be that God would be your healer. That he would fill your mind with pictures of Snooky that would make you smile. That he would fill your mind with memories of Snooky that would make you laugh. But my prayer for you more than anything else is that as you think about 
contemplate, contemplate. Perhaps maybe in a time when you're not really thinking about it any other time, this thing called death, that you would discover in Jesus Christ the new life that God offers. The new life that, by the way, Naomi shared with me, uh, Snooky's nurse said there was a time when Snooky came to the realization of the fact that he was a sinner and he needed Jesus. And he gave his life, he accepted that gift of forgiveness that God offers. And so for Snooky, this is just the beginning of an eternity with Jesus Christ. And so my prayer for you this afternoon is that you would discover that. You would find that. If you've never, if you've never found that, if you've never accepted that, that you would find a new life in Jesus Christ and that relationship with God that every one of us was made to have. Let's pray. God, again, I thank you for the many blessings that we have in life and earthly, uh, humanly speaking, none of them are greater than the people that you have placed in our lives. Some of them will leave a mark that will never go away. And I get the sense here this afternoon that Snooky was one of those people. And so, Lord, I pray that you would just uh, be the healer, that those in this room would claim to you as the one who is the comforter, the one who gives strength, and that you would turn what are now probably memories that cause pain, you would turn those memories into memories that cause joy and laughter. But I pray most of all that there wouldn't be a person in this room that would leave here today without considering what it means, what it looks like, the need to have a relationship with you. And I pray this in Jesus' name.
city. I moved back to Raymond, and <coughs> I didn't want to bring my children up in the city. They taught, he taught my kids how to drive a tractor and with then headphone things like you said. <laughs> Build a house? My kids <laughs> said, like, you threw them down too, I'm sure. <laughs> Feel free to stick around just as long as you want and talk and share. Thank you again for